Hello, everybody. It's Pops from Pop Shrooms coming to you from the Mush Lab. Before we get started, I just want to, first of all, thank you for joining us. And if at the end of this tutorial, you, you find yourself liking it, we'd appreciate if you did a like and maybe even be a subscriber if you're not. Um, also, a quick note, just almost a mission statement. The reason that we do these tutorials and the reason that uh, we're putting these kind of educational uh, films together is we just believe in spreading as much information out there into the community, a really strong and growing, vibrant, and <laughs> just exciting, important community to learn how to harvest and do a lot of these things that we're all interested in. Do them at home, on our own, in a way that is intelligent, healthy, and even on budgets. This particular video is really about doing it on a budget. Uh, so, you'll oftentimes, you'll see us get a little goofy around here. We have our friends that are in the lab that are characters, and if you don't know us, we're at Pop Shrooms 2 on IG, so you can follow us there too. Uh, we wanna educate, we wanna entertain, and we wanna communicate. So once again, thanks for joining us. So today's video is going to be about, um, it's called Uncle Ben's Tech, it's called Spider-Man's Tech, it's called um, Poor Boy's Tech. There's a lot of names out there for it, but the bottom line, what it really is, is a very reasonable, I'm not, I don't use the word cheap, because cheap's a bad word, but it's a reasonable, smart, very smart way to be able to get yourself some grain spawn that then you can use to move towards making fruit very quickly. Um, this particular, when you do it, uh, using the this Uncle Ben's, uh, we're only gonna be talking about using the whole grain brown rice. There are other times and maybe even other particular Uncle Ben's that people use, but this is the only one we've ever really been able to find to use. So if you're looking at this for the first time, remember to make sure that you're getting Uncle Ben's and we're talking about the whole grain brown rice. And it's gonna come in packages that look like this. We're gonna get back to the packages in a minute, but they come to you kind of like in this flat little flat little package like this. So, um, re regarding the, the tech, the, the concept really is quite simple. What we're gonna end up doing with this bag from a grocery store shelf. Uh, here's a question I get asked a lot. Pops, what do I do with the bag when I get it? Do I have to microwave it? Do I have to cook it for 90 seconds first? What do I do with the bag? We don't do anything with this bag. It's completely right off of the grocery shelf. We're gonna take this bag and we're gonna work with it, okay? And we're gonna take this bag and we're gonna make it just like one of these bags. Why is this one so much smarter, cheaper? Uh, that bad word. Um, it's pretty simple. This one took a lot of work. It took probably prepping this grain, boiling the grain, draining the grain, straining the grain, spreading it out, drying it, putting it in the bag. After that, putting it in a PC. After the PC, bringing it out, sealing it, curing it, letting it sit there for a while. Then, uh, then and only then, they're equal. So that's one of the reasons it's nice to grab one of these off the grocery shelf because you don't have to do what we did to get this. So, we'll talk about how we get here and here right now. So, I have sort of, oh, ha ha, Pops Pointer. I love my pointer, um, so I'm gonna use Pops Pointer. So, tech, we use the word tech in this industry or in our, in our hobby a lot. The word tech, T-E-K, you see it a lot. It's a shortcut for the word technique. So different people come up with different techs and different ideas and we'll ascribe it to that person and call it such and such a person's tech or such and such a type PF tech. Um, just different kinds of techs. Uh, it's a shortcut. 
and sometimes we'll use it even jokingly. Um, and I'm using it jokingly today. I'm going to call what we're doing today twist tech because I'm going to show you a technique that we use here, very, very quick, easy way, and we call it twist tech. So twist tech is going to ultimately, I'm going to be showing you two different tricks in the twist tech technique. One of those is how we prepare the bag, per, firstly, and then the second thing is after the bag's prepared, after it's been inoculated, how we finish it off, clip it. So we call it the twist and clip are the two steps that are, are they're not unique because nobody just thought them up, but they're what we put into this particular technique. And I can guarantee you, if you follow these procedures, you will have a very, very high success rate. I'm going to explain some of that to you briefly. Um, another thing is, no matter what we're doing at all times, especially because we're talking about a particular tech that doesn't have, we're not using a flow hood, we're not going to use a glove box, we're not going to use a still air box, we're not going to use anything but open air and some fast movements, um, not sterile, but some fast sanitary movements to do our inoculations. We, at all times, want whatever area we're working in to be a clean area. Uh, bathrooms turn out to be pretty clean. If you can go in there, get everything wiped down really well, clean your countertops, spray some Lysol in there, close the door maybe, get your air closed off in there. You don't want a lot of running air because it's gonna bring stuff in that doesn't want to be there, floating through the air. Um, so bathrooms tend to be an area if you don't have of course, stainless steel, you can wipe it down. Clean, clean, clean area is where you want to be operating for this, what we're going to be talking about. So that's paramount, clean area. Uh, these are going to be the things that we need to use to do the tech that we're going to discuss. Uh, the technique that we're going to discuss. Obviously, you need your bag of brown rice. Uh, how many bags do you need, Pop? Um, I'm just going to give a standard. There's different standards out there. What we like to go with, and it's just a nice, good, basic number. Around here, we always are be nature and be basic. And if you stay basic, you later on as you as you grow in the game, you do things that'll that'll get you more experimentation and more testing. And that's a lot of what we do around here. But at the beginning, or even at this particular part of this sport, we're just going to be basic. So you, my, my, how many bags of rice pops? We're gonna say two cc's per bag. We might bump it up. Let's say we have a 10 cc uh, syringe. We might just do four bags. So that would end up being two and a half cc's per bag. The truth is as you're, as you're um, injecting into these bags, you can't really control that half a cc or I can't. So it might be two in one and three in the other, and three in one and two in the other. And by the time I've done four bags, the whole syringe is gone. Oftentimes I'll also do five bags with the syringe. So it ends up being probably about two and two and two and two. So four or five bags per syringe, your choice. So that's how many bags. What do we need next? We need a syringe. We need an alcohol wipe. We need 70-30 alcohol spray. 70-30, it's uh, you'll just get the isopropyl alcohol. Um, well, it's 70-30, it's already, it's already done. Just mix it up. It's, it's already mixed for you. Um, you'll want a flame. This will be for flaming our needle. We can use a butane torch, or we can also use just a Bic lighter. Um, oftentimes, if we don't have this or we're out of butane, we can just use a butane lighter because at the end of the, the operation, we're going to end up wiping our needle off to cool it down. And if there is any soot on it, which it would be clean soot, but it, we're, we're going to wipe it off with our uh, alcohol wipe anyways. So for your flame, you can use a lighter or you can use a torch. Uh, we're going to want micropore tape. Micropore tape is a somewhat specialized tape. Uh, I understand you can get it even at your local pharmacies. It's a tape, they call it micropore for a reason. 
It has pores, microscopic, they're not microscopic, but extremely tiny pores in the tape, allowing that tape to breathe. That tape that we're gonna now, in our operation, use to put on the corner of this bag, this tape is now becoming, is going to become a filter because it breathes and it's gonna mimic, I'm gonna go through this in a, in a moment, but it's gonna mimic this filter. So when we put it on this bag, the way we do, this right here, this is a filter, mimics the filter of this. We'll get to that in a moment. So we have micropore tape, we need a pair of scissors, we need a, a few paper towels, and you can use rubber gloves if you want to. It's, it's actually a good idea. If you have rubber gloves, use them at this point. I'm gonna not use them just for the sake of this demonstration to show that you can do this without rubber gloves, but um, it, if you have them, I, I definitely recommend that you use them for this operation. So again, I'll run through that one more time. We, however many bags of rice you plan on inoculating, we want a, the, the, those syringes that you're going to be using and an alcohol wipe per syringe, 70-30 alcohol spray. I want to use my pointer, not my finger. Micropore tape, um, scissors, paper towel, rubber gloves, and I, I call those optional, but if you have them, use them. So, what do you think about that, Professor? Okay, so by way of explanation, and then we'll move to the tech, basically this bag is this bag in a different form. The, this bag, let's call this a chimney. So this is the chimney to the bag. And if you notice, the bag comes with all of the grain way down here in a soft, oh, oh what's he doing? He's twisting, whoops, twisting. That's the same thing, it's a twist. So we have a filter here and we have a chimney. So when I get this bag from the store, what I want to do is I want to recreate this bag. I need this bag to have a filter, a filter, and I need it to have a chimney. So what I want to do, the, what I, we found out here, that the more compact our rice is down to the bottom of the bag, the better you're going to have A, in speed of inoculation, and B, in success of inoculation, and C, in less contamination. The loose rice that we end up with up at the top of the bag, if you don't compact it hard, that's the area that tends to um, contaminate. I think what happens is the oils rise up. There's, there's certain oils and certain uh, chemicals and preservatives that the manufacturer has put in this bag that are almost release agents that help this rice after it's been heated and ready for us to eat to release it from this plastic sleeve. So it's those oils, unusual oils to the mycelium, that they move up in this bag while the mycelium grows down. And it's, if there's loose rice up here, it gets stuck in those oils and it will contaminate. So part of our process we're gonna show you is to get that rice down tight and compact. And the more compact it is, the better your chance of having a great bag is. Before we go to there, I'm gonna jump forward, talk about the clip part of this tech, and then we'll prep a bag. So the clip part of the tech is very key because we're, at this point, we're creating our filter. We found out through trial and error that you can't just put a few small holes in, in this bag and expect it to be really successful. This bag's creating a lot of CO2 gas inside of it. One of the techs I used, used just one little hole, and this thing would blow up. And the tech was, oh, you go in there once in a while and you burp the bag and sort of allow the CO2, force the CO2 to escape. This tech that we're showing here, you don't do that. This one, with the clip that we're putting in, we're making a nice big hole in this bag, but a safe hole, and it's going to end up being covered and become a filter. 
So that poll we're going to discuss. The poll is sort of key when you go to look at the bag, the bag from the manufacturer. Let me use a red one so it'll stand out here on the board. The bag. From the manufacturer, the bag's like this. I'll just say Uncle Ben's here. Then it has about a quarter inch seal, a manufacturer seal around the edge of the envelope of the bag. That's about a quarter of an inch right there. That's the spot that we need to avoid really damaging because that's the seal holding the rice bag together. When we make our cut, it's gonna be across the corner here. And we have to take into consideration we have a quarter inch of manufacturer seal here and a quarter inch of manufacturer seal here. So when we make our hole, it has to be a lot bigger than we think because it's really, your hole's really only here, okay? if we can see that. So at the end of the day, when I show you where we're going to do our cut, it's going to be like this, and it's going to get a lot bigger here to allow air in and out of here. And I'll show you right on a bag exactly where we're going to do that. So if you look at Uncle Ben's the top of his head, we're going to take an angle, go straight across the top of his head, and that gives us the size of hole minus the manufacturer's seal, gives us the exact size hole that we want. So when we do go to do our cut at the clip time at the end of this technique, that's why we're making the cut where we do and about the size we do. Okay. so. The bag prep. We'll be done with this here in a few minutes now. Now it's gonna happen. Our bag prep, when we get it from the store, it comes to us as this flat, weird, not weird, but it comes to us like this, flat and like this. What we wanna do is break this up and get it down to the bottom of this. Softball it down. Here is a very, very cool, neat trick. This is gonna help you do two things. Three, you're going to see the bottom window of this bag really open up. It's going to also create a space that we can really push our grain down. And it's going to promote colonization because it's going to be further down and compact without loose grains up here at the top. Step one, the manufacturer's bag actually comes with a little slot right there that your scissor pokes right through. You don't have to do anything but poke your scissor right through. Take that and make a cut. Same thing on the other side. Make a cut. As it's still flat, I'm gonna go ahead and open the bag right there to where I see my window. Now, I'm gonna trim around the bag here. Remember that, again, we're talking a manufacturer seal. You can see it when you're looking at it. You don't want to cut into the seal, and you want to stay a little bit away from it because when we're putting pressure down on this bag, we don't want it to explode at this seal. So I'm going to make a cut around this, trimming this, and making myself a real nice-looking, easy place to look into the bottom of this bag. So the trim is right here. I'll trim like that, trim this corner off over here, same thing here, and same thing there. So I've still got a little bit of edge, a little bit of manufacturer edge, 
but I've got this open bag. Now we're going to do the twist part, the twist tech. We're going to take this bag and we're just going to go right from the top like this and just twist it. It's starting right there to fill the bottom of our little bag just by twisting it down. And it's broken up that cake. It's broken up that cake. And oh, guess what? Guess what it looks like? And it's starting to fill this window. So just by, now be careful. You don't want to be a monster. You don't want to be a guy that can just rip this off. But you'll find this is a very sturdy bag. I've already created myself a little bag like that. Now I'm going to open it up and you'll find, guess what I have? I have a very close representation to this. I've got a chimney now and I've got a softball down here. I'm almost ready to inoculate. Now on this bag, there's one other thing I want to caution us. You'll find a few little loose, you can literally feel them up here in the chimney, little loose grains. And those little loose grains, we don't want, and they're singular, one individual little loose grains up in here. We want to get those down and join the group. We don't want little individual loose ones up here. Those are just places waiting for oil and contam. And it's really apparent, you can feel them with your hand, you can also, in any light, you can literally through this bag, you can look right up and go, oh, there's a little grain right there. Hold on, let me smush it down to join the rest. So usually when I get to about here, I'm gonna also give myself a nice tight push down. And again, a nice tight push down. I might twist it tight one more time, but I know that I've got a ball and I've also got an amazing viewing window now for watching my inoculation. Everything's tight and good down here. And when my uh, donation, whether it's multi-spore or liquid culture, when it gets down in here, it's gonna go right down into my window and I get to virtually watch the whole progress. So here we go. We've got ourselves a bag ready to go. So I'm going to get four bags propped up here and those four bags will be the four bags that we're going to go to work with. And you'll notice I already had some prepped with the twist technique. And here I'm untwisting them. I usually twist them and just leave them there until it's time to use them. Just twist them. You'll see they're just sitting here twisted. These twisted little bags. I got them and they'll sit like this until it's time to, time to, to use them. That's after they've been prepared. I'll get them like that. And it's actually very nice too. You, you'll see when it's time to go and inoculate, we have a nice tight area right here that's pretty easy to puncture, okay? So those four are ready to go. Once in a while, I, I, we keep our Lysol around, and once in a while, I will just spray my uh, air area for air quality just a random spray here and there. We try to keep everything super clean anyways. And uh, even though I don't have rubber gloves on right now, um, I'm also gonna keep my hands pretty clean too. Um, it helps quite a bit. So go into the game with your, your um, hands clean. Here you'll always see us wearing uh, lab coats unless we're doing something real that, that's gonna get dirty, real dirty. Um, it's not for show. It's This is the same thing as wearing a, a rubber gloves to us and it's super inexpensive. And the truth is it does, 
It, it brings your whole game up. If, if you can afford it for $20, get yourself a lab coat. So it's an, an amazingly good idea. It brings your whole micro game up. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna prep the bag. There's two areas that I'm worried about making sure we've been handling quite a bit and we wanna wipe them off right now. One's gonna be the inoculation point. The other is going to be up here where I'm gonna be clipping the bag. Those are the two areas we're gonna go ahead and wipe down right now. So I'm gonna spray the inoculation point and I'm gonna spray the corner of all four bags. Wipe that down, wipe these down. I don't mind if they stay mildly wet after my wipe right now because they're going to evaporate to this alcohol 70% has a nice evaporation rate. It kind of sits there and evaporates as it stays clean. So those are all my bags ready. The next thing I want to do is I want to prepare eight pieces of tape, two per bag. One is going to be a small piece of tape. This tape is going to cover the injection port that I'm going to use when I inject the donation into the bag. So I'll put four of those prepared. And then I'm going to make four more long ones. These are the long ones that are going to cover the clip that we're going to cut. Right at the top of his head, we're going to be making that cut at an angle. We're going to kind of give him a shave right across the top of his head is where the angle is. That bag was a little bit less, but ideally you want to go right across the top of Uncle Ben's head, leaving him hair, barely leaving him hair. So we are going to make four long ones. We like to have those prepped and ready because all of the moves we're going to make when we're ready to make them are going to be pretty fast. So let's, we're going to have all of our moves prepared. So I've got my bags wiped down. I've got my corners clipped. I'm looking at things. I know I'm pretty much ready to go. Uh, I've picked which donation I'm going to use. Uh, <clears throat> okay. I'll shake it up, make sure that it's well distributed across the syringe because I want each portion of that donation that's going to go into the four bags to not have an opportunity to have a good part of the donation in it. And yes, indeed, I don't know if the camera gets a chance to see that or not, but it's extremely vibrant. I have my alcohol wipe ready right here. I have my 16 gauge, excuse me in this case, it's an 18 gauge needle ready. And I have my torch ready. Okay. When I go to make my injections, I'm going to make that injection optimally right where we see this line of rice. There's like a brown cup almost or a plate. Below that's the rice. I like to go right at the rice. I also like to go about a quarter of an inch in and angle my uh, syringe needle down just a little bit. So I'm gonna get more of a trickle down after I've began my injection. So that'll, that's the nature of the injection. That's how we're trying to go. Uh, so. At this point now, I'm not going to do a whole lot of talking. I'm just going to move through these moves and you can watch what they are. I, uh, what pops? You're not going to talk? That's all you do is do is talk. Um, no, I just keep thinking in my mind, what are questions people might have? And can I explain them as I go along? So I get helpful. So right now I've wiped that uh, alcohol off of my tip here. My syringe needle is in a sealed package already. 
a um, sterile package. So I'm going to go ahead and take my lock off and get this put right into my syringe. Now I'm in still pretty sterile condition because it's got a cap on it. So I feel good about that. I'll go ahead and still take that off and still feel good about this for now. We don't usually leave these sitting around with just caps on, but I still feel like it's pretty sterile. Okay. So this is where I want to give myself my my uh, alcohol wipe ready. And I have my flame ready. So I'm going to go ahead and Flame the needle till it's red hot. Notice no still air box, no flow hood, no we're about a quarter of an inch in. Next one. Next one. And we're gonna give our final amount to the fourth bag. Each one getting a pretty equal amount. Now our quick moves, we're gonna go back over that injection hole that we just made and put our small tape, not allowing any opportunity for any kind of contamination to get in that small little tiny hole that we just made especially because our air is very clean around here. And the surface was clean before we started. Boom, 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 that's it. Our bags are quite literally safe right now. They're safe and they're ready for our final step. Our final step being, let's go ahead and always remove our needle and put that in the hazardous waste bin. We save these and recycle them. So that goes in a different bin over here. Now, here's our final step. I'm gonna wash my hands one more time. Our final step is clip. Okay, so I do this one at a time. Remember, I'm gonna go right across Uncle Ben's head. So I'm going to Cut it, and just as I cut it, I still hold it closed with my hand, allowing nothing to get in. Put your tape on where it's halfway over, then fold it over like that. It's quite okay for it to run long. Don't worry about it yet. Next one. Number three, Ben gets a haircut. Then he gets taped closed, fold over, run long, run long. So the big key in this was prepping the bag. Getting your bag to be a lot like a grain bag, but you didn't have to do a whole lot to it. You just had to smush it down there, open it up with some scissors down at the bottom with those little tricks. Open it up at the bottom with that clip, the clip, trim it around, smush it down. Boop, boop, whoop. And now make it pretty. Now we just clean that off with our, with our scissors. Like that. So we're gonna take however many bags you've inoculated. As you can see, if I weren't so talkative, 
that you could do this all in about five minutes. I think I I timed it. I've done four bags in two minutes, and that wasn't even trying to be a speed. Dude. Four bags, two minutes. Zzz. Yeah. So I'm gonna wrap it up here by saying the big part of this is prepping the bag. The second big part of it is making sure that you have a very nice breathing hole for express later on that builds up a lot of extra gas in here, actually more gas in this particular thing, uh, uh, bag and, and, and grain, than it, you get this way. Uh, just the way, probably something to do with the manufacturing, but it is an amazing, amazing technique. You end up with, in four to five minutes, with one, two, three, four, five, as many bags as you want. And here's what you start getting. It starts, the camera can see it, it's already this one was just, we just inoculated a couple of days ago and you already start to see down at the bottom of this great little window, you already can start seeing. And then at the end, of, I'm not gonna say it always happens, some, depending if you're doing multi-spore, we up to 30 days, you get you know a full, real good bag. Some liquid cultures, and depending on the strains, and you know we do a lot the gourmets and the edibles and everything depends on what you're doing. Um, this is a 10-day bag, fully cultured, completely and totally cultured. So that's what the technique can get us, real easy. So we call it the twist tech. We are here at the Mush Lab on Pops, and I really appreciate you taking your time to listen to this today. If you like what you saw, would you please put a like on at the end of this video that you watched? And if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe. And if you don't follow us, at uh, try to follow us at Instagram, Pop Shrooms 2. And Spread the shrooms, spread the love, spread the spores, and be nature. Be nature. Pop shrooms, signing out.